That's not our God. But that's what happens when we're alienated from God and go to other gods. Dead gods, not the living God. But when we go to our living God, we experience a God who's faithful and forever, forever to rejoice over us and to take away our sins. When we go to God, we can stop living in fear about what everybody else might be thinking of us or what the world is saying to us, and we can be confident in who our God of love is for us. So we move from that house of fear to the house of love. If we're alienated from God, we live in fear. If we're with God and connected with God, we live in love and by confidence. The God rejoices over us. Can you imagine the God of the universe? Just imagine that. The God of the universe from where every blessing flows from, all goodness and beauty, jumps up and down in front of you, always and forever. Get locked into that and enjoy your life. Get locked into that and enjoy your life. The God of the universe. And who cares what the naysayers are saying? People trying to take you down because it will always happen. Somewhere. People are fickle. Many times. You say the greatest thing and then just take us down. So, I think in the context of this, in the, the Lord's joy and rejoicing, as St. Paul exhorts us, rejoice in the Lord always. Again, I say rejoice as we celebrate the nearing of the birth of Christ and our relationship with Him. We can, let's just, let's just picture an image of the picture of Jesus smiling. How often we see, we, we do see the smile of Jesus at different places. But we don't exactly get that picture maybe from the scriptures about Jesus because of his life. Why is he not smiling? Well, in the Gospels, Jesus is not smiling because it's not about his personality in the Gospels. It's really about his, his message, his words, and his deeds. That's the focus. So it doesn't really, we don't get the details on that. And it's about bringing the godly into the ungodliness of our world. And that's not always a smiling matter. So we don't picture Jesus as exactly smiling on that. And it's also in the Gospels are basically about the suffering, death, and resurrection of Christ. And so that's serious business. So it's not like a continuous narrative of Jesus' life where he grew up and he grew up in the family. We don't have a lot of details of that. We just have details of the last three years of his life. And the third reason, maybe while we don't see Jesus as a smiling Jesus, and the believers who were a minority were under persecution. And so they were feeling and experiencing that. And the one that they loved and that they believed in and they trusted in was going to be executed mercilessly. You know, so where is the spot in Jesus? So we kind of have to we have to pray and we have to come into relationship with God more and more to in Christ to understand that He's smiling. Just imagine in the different stories where he met sinners or the blind people or the tax collectors or the adulterous woman. Imagine him coming with the grace of his kindness and a smile before them to take away their sin and say, I'm going to replace that sin with myself. I am going to do that. I'm not going to come show you a God that rejoices over you. I am the warrior savior. And I will renew you in my love. And as he comes to renew and purify us in our love, just like he did for that man, on the dime, 48 years, gone, living in the house of fear, in condemnation, and he comes back. He says, I'm going to give you that love. It'll make you come undone. Have you ever, has he ever made you cry? Because of his great love. Just to open your heart to that and to believe that he's jumping up and down for you to take away your sin and to replace that with himself. So it purifies and cleans us and the sin is brought out that creates a vacuum of space that must be replaced by him and his grace. And that's what John the Baptist was preaching. He, he, he preached forgiveness of sins, but then the people came to him, what do we do now? What do we do? We'll take care of the poor. Stop extorting people. Stop ripping people off. Be satisfied with what you have. This is what John the Baptist is teaching. Do. But not just do it. Do it joyfully. There's a different, there's a huge difference in, in giving, just going through the motions and giving joyfully. If we give joyfully, 
he will say, where's the joy coming from? What's it about? And we can say, we have a God who's jumping up and down over us all the time. He's forgiven my sin. He's set me free. I no longer live in fear. I live in love. And he's got me forever. And I'm with him. And I follow him. And I love him. And I'm free. Because that's the God we serve. Jesus is smiling at us. He frees us. He sets us free. He takes away our sin. He says, go and serve and do it in joy.